Hey guys, it's Chad from Dirt 4 TV. Uh, today we received the UTV heater. This is from Cooper's Products. It is their ice crusher cab heater. Um, we're going to install it in a 2017 XP1000 with Ride Command. So with the Ride Command, it's a little bit different of a system than one without. But we have the we have the heater for Ride Command, and let's get it open and take a look at what we got. Okay, guys, here's everything displayed, laid out. This is the Ice Crusher kit with the max stat so there's all your hoses zip ties all your vents mounting hardware bracketry switches on and off switch for inline on your antifreeze wise grommets wiring harness the max stat Ice Crusher heater kit, which is extra, and then your heater core with blower motor and instructions. So, like I said, this is 2017 Ride Command XP1000. What we'll do is we'll pull four bolts off the windshield, get the windshield off, take off this front cover, the two clips here that's simple and then like I said we'll get the windshield off take these bolts out right here so we can get the front console pulled out the seats will get both seats out we will get the center console removed uh, the heater goes all the way up underneath there and your controls are going to be in this box so you're going to lose this box um, for storage but that's just what you have to sacrifice for heat I'm good with it so we'll get all these things pulled off of here and start the install okay guys uh, let me tell you what we've got completed so far We've, everything that needed to be removed, the cowl, the console, all that is out. Um, down here, the first step is to drill the two holes. Um, you use your template. Um, what we did was we just used a snap punch and we taped the template up there. We snap punched the center holes. Take your template off. Use their supplied drill bit and hole saw you're going to have to have a right angled drill bit we were able to get through both of these now i'm going to end up putting on the grommet on both of these and then we'll run the hose up from there and it was pretty tight getting in there and of course you have all this electrical what i ended up doing was taking this piece of steel and i jammed it all the way up there to where it wouldn't cut any of my wires when I drilled through didn't have any problem once we had the steel in there but I am going to tell you there's a lot of wires there so be careful next we are up front here and basically the same thing got the template cut out um, get your snap punch lay your template out snap your hole here and the same thing on the other side put another hole in there and then now I'm gonna drill these two out um, for the defrost vents make sure that you are not getting into any of the wires up underneath here there's quite a bit but where the holes are we have a lot more room than we did down below on the console so I'm gonna drill these holes right now you're going to use the 55 millimeter supplied hole saw and you're going to drill through your marks now make sure there's nothing up underneath here that you're going to drill in which there isn't
double check. Looks good. There's one down. Now we'll drill the driver's side, making sure there's nothing underneath here. Alright, we already got the front hose down through the console and it's run to the front. You are going to have to lube up the hose with some dish soap and water. Now we're going to run the rear hose to the back of the machine. Which way do you want it to go, Bacon? Yep, Keep going. Yep, So make sure you have it looped up because that really makes a difference. Yeah, just keep going and we'll keep about a foot up here like it says. Okay, there's a foot. Looks good. Guys, um, we're on to the back here. We're getting ready to put in our, splice in the shut off. And up in here, if you can see, that's where we're going to put it, to where you can access it from the oil door from the inside of the vehicle. So Bacon's going to pull that out there. He's going to install the shut off. So he has the shut off on one side. It's just going to get. And then we'll zip tie it right like that. Right in the center. And you're able to access that through the door from between the seats. That look out good. Right here is the Mac Stat. Make sure you follow your instructions on assembly of the Mac Stat. Say about an inch to an inch and a half is what you want to cut out of this hose. We have some clamps on the radiator hose right now so we don't lose all of the fluid.
like Bacon says, instruction said to cut an inch to an inch and a half out of that hose. fitting is on the top. And it's going to have to be angled out just a little bit so it doesn't rub on the motor at all. We'll readjust this once we get it all stuck together. Apologize for the camera angle on some of this. A lot of the areas are just so tight you can't even fit your hands in there, so it's hard to get a camera in there and work in the same spot. And that should be hose. He's cutting the hose to length. That's run all the way up through the center console. And this is the one that goes on your brass fitting out of the max stat. It can be zip tied. We'll get that all zip tied later after we get everything ready. Right that should work out really good. We're working on the hose going to the front right at the moment. We're figuring out how to, how to put the Y connection in here. And cut an inch and a half out of this hose. Right there in that flat spot, it's going to be pretty good. Uh oh, don't fall out. So let's start there. Go roughly an inch and a half. A little far, but uh, right, right there. there. Yep. There you go. That's about where we're going to cut. Trying to get the clamps on here so we don't lose very much antifreeze.
this so it doesn't get kinked. That is the hose going through the floor. We're shorting, shortening it up, but don't shorten it up too much so it yeah, gets kinked in there. So to find a good spot to where we can zip tie it once it's, we're going to cut it a hair long right now. Cut some yeah, cut about another five inches off of there, at least six. About like that. That gives us room to zip tie up there. It's right about there. You got a clamp. And see that runs up to the top, away from the shock. And we can mount to the frame, zip tie to the frame in several spots. Twist it just a hair. Just like that. This is day two, which last night we only worked on it for about two hours. Um, we didn't quite follow the instructions. Um, we had two people working on it. I kind of did the disassembly up front, drilled the holes for all the venting system, and Bacon worked on the plumbing. So I took the front half of the instructions and he took the back half. So where we're at today is installing the heater core system from the ice crusher um, heater and I have to drill a couple holes up here and I'll show you how to do that. Okay so what you need is a quarter inch drill bit and you need to drill this bottom one out all the way through the firewall and then you'll take their self tapping screw that they supply and that's going to go into the top one and that's for your bracketry Okay, so now we need to remove this glove box. Um, there is a Torx out here on the front that attaches to the back. And then also, if you have Ride Command, you have your plug-in for updates. So you'll have to remove that too and find somewhere else to mount it. But uh, I'll show you up front here where that Torx is. So up front here, there is a bracket right here and it goes down to the back of that glove box and I've already removed the torque uh, torque screw so that glove box should be able to come right out I will have to remove that USB plug-in so now I'm inside here and I'm gonna wiggle it. there that came out there's a grommet here for that USB and it should come right out. 
On the back of this, there is also um, your light, which is your floorboard light. Okay, so to get this LED light, you kind of have to squeeze these pins. I guess they're more like tabs together and then push up and it'll come out of the box of the back and there you go. Okay, so there is a little bit of assembly on the heater core. Um, you, this piece right here slides on and off. You end up taking the two bigger screws, I believe they're tens, um, number tens, and you'll put one in here, one in here, then take your caps, and then take the smaller screws and put two in each one of these caps, and that secures it. And then also make sure if you have the plugs in here, take your plugs out, remove those plugs. Then also when you get this in there to assemble it, it's gonna sit like this. This is gonna be the front of the vehicle. And those screws, or I'm sorry, the firewall that we drilled out, the bottom one is the one we drilled completely out and it's going to go like this. So the bottom one that we drilled out through the firewall and then the self tapper is going to go through this one and then we'll, once we get in there we have to mark these two. They go through the glove box and uh, I'll get that up in there later. And then you want to take your long carriage bolts, feed them all the way through to the other side and put your nuts on. And then we can assemble this as a unit inside there. I'll get in there, we'll get it somewhat assembled and we'll show you what it looks like. We've got the heater core system in here, uh, kind of show you what we've done here. Open up that door and you can see in here. So what we have is we have the heater is mounted. Um, we have the hoses are clamped down. We have the bracket that is in place. Up here it is attached to the glove box. We also have the LED light plugged in. All of those things working back in that tight space. It was tough, but take your time and you can get it done. Uh, where I'm at right now is I'm going to cut all of the pieces for the duct work and I need to get it wired up. I'll probably wire it first to make sure the blower motor works and the switch housing works. Make sure you use soap or some sort of lubricant um, to get these onto the Ys. Actually, the Ys are kind of sharp. Um, I took a little bit of sand, a sanding block, you know, that you sand in your house uh, on the walls. And I ended up just going around all three sides of every one of the Ys. And then I was able to just put a little bit of soap, a little bit of water, and the pipe slid right on. Uh, another thing is these vents, they come apart and you have to have them apart to fit them in the hole. And it works really well once you get them apart, but the big ones that uh, are in the center, they come apart really easily, okay? These other ones, they're kind of difficult to get, to get apart. Um, two of them I was able just to twist and they came apart. So we're literally down to the last bolt. Um, the driver's side's easy. This one's right here, it's easy to get to. Now this is my USB port that I talked about earlier that was inside the box. We ended up just moving it over here, stuck it up right in there so now I can do my updates on my maps and everything. Um, I thought it looked better there than just being tied up underneath the hood or hanging down below. Here is the heater installed.
both defrost vents up top. All the piping underneath there. We're going to get it fired up here and purge the system for air. Okay guys, we've went through one complete heat cycle. Um, the antifreeze into the motor, when we started up, it warmed up and then the thermostat opened in the motor. So then it cooled down. Then once it got warm, it opened the thermostat, which is your max stat, which started to allow uh, antifreeze to flow up the tunnel here um, to get to your heater core and we let it run got up to 190 degrees the fan kicked on uh, we let it run till the fan sh shut off once the fan shut off we shut the vehicle down here we go with heat cycle number two I'm going to start it up I'll put my hand on the throttle so we can speed it up get it at a fast idle we'll raise up the temperature a little bit quicker too and it will also circulate the antifreeze a little bit better. 185, the fan turned off. We're going to shut everything down. We're going to let it cool down completely. And then we'll check the coolant level uh, to see how we are. We were getting good hot air out of the ice crusher fan. Um, I think we're really close, guys, to getting this thing done, purged of air. Uh, if I have any problems or anything, we're going to crack that plug back there on the motor. Uh, other than that, things are looking really good. Let's let her cool down and see where we're at. Okay, I just got back from a ride in this side-by-side. -side. Um, on the third heat cycle, um, we had no heat coming out of the ice crusher. I thought we had it, but there was no heat, so there had to be an airlock somewhere. Um, I let it cool down, then I cracked the bleeder screw on the engine in the back, which I don't know if you guys know about this, but I'll show you. Okay. Right back here, you have your exhaust pipe coming out of the manifold, and off to the left, I'll stick the camera back there, I don't know if you'll get to see it, there is a 8 millimeter screw. There's an 8 millimeter screw right next to the manifold, and that is your weep hole that you can purge the system. So I cracked it and very little air if any came out so I knew I was close. Um, so what I ended up doing was I topped off everything out front, the reservoir, topped off the antifreeze. So I just went for a little ride. I am 178 degrees on temp. I'm going to do a little shot in here. See where we're at. Temperatures going up sitting here. 183. So 
I just saw one 49.9. Um, I took it out and it did get up to temperature around 170, 180 degrees um, is all the XP would get up to temp tonight. It's very cold here. Um, I really couldn't get it into the 180s, 190s, but I was blowing hot air. The hardest part we had today was getting the air out of the system. I know they did say that you should prime the system with the garden hose, and that's what that little uh, nipple that they gave you uh, was for. I never did find anywhere in the instructions what that was for, but I figured it out later. Uh, maybe we should have primed it, but we didn't prime because we clamped off all of the hoses and we didn't lose hardly any antifreeze. So it took about a little over a quart of antifreeze to fill the whole system. It's really nice having the vents right there in the center. Uh, they'll keep the, your midsection warm. And then you have the ones down by your feet. And another thing about this system is it uses the air. So it recirculates the air from inside the cabin. So it's not always having to use the outside air and heat that up. Overall, the system is really nice. And it fit in here pretty good. When I mean pretty good, it was tight. I'm not going to lie to you. Hooking up the hoses and getting your fingers back there, uh, it, was, it was difficult at times. Um, but hooking up the hoses running from the motor to the heater core, though, that was no problem. Just drilling some holes, running some lines, zip tying some hoses, uh, installing the Y up front here, which is right down there. No big deal, simple. In back, the Max Stat, very easy to hook up, and I ran the hose up there, and then my shut off is right up in there, so I can reach the shut off from your access door. Pull the access door, shut off's right in there. But it's a really good system. I'm going to try it out. Leave some comments below. I will uh, chime in and leave some comments after I try it for a while. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up. And also don't forget to subscribe so you can be updated on future videos. Thanks for watching Dirt Poor TV.